Whether you're just starting out camping or you've been camping your whole life, you're gonna make some mistakes along the way. And some of these mistakes can really ruin a camp out. So today I'm gonna talk about different camping mistakes that can ruin your camp out and what to do about it. Gear up and get outside. The very first mistake I'd like to talk to is a poor tent pad selection. Now there's a lot of reasons a spot might be bad for it. If it's not level, if it's on a slope, it could also just be really rocky. It could be too rough for the bottom of your tent, pierce a hole, and later down the road, you're gonna have leaking issues. At this camp spot where I'm at here this weekend with my family, the ground is pretty level. There's some bumps. You're always gonna have some bumps. You're gonna have to deal with that. But there's some spots where there's all these little tiny pine cones and little sticks. I try to sweep as many of those out of the way because especially if you've got a thin pad or you've got some kids with you that maybe don't, don't have the thickest pads, guilty, then you're really gonna feel that underneath you. So clear out as much as of that as you can before you pitch your tent and you'll be thanking yourself at midnight. Are there any widow makers? You know those half dead branches sticking out of a tree that could drop right on top of your tent? Avoid setting up under that. Are there any ant hills or evidence of varmints or moles? Take a little time to pick a good tent pad and you'll be really happy you did. The second common mistake I see is selecting the wrong sleeping system for the situation. Now, dialing in the perfect sleeping system for you might take some time. I know it's been years, and as I've grown older, it's harder for me to sleep at night, especially in the woods. My needs or desires have evolved, so it's not always gonna be the same, and you might have to test out different stuff over time. Don't run out the gate spending huge money if you're just starting out on some fancy sleeping system that you're not sure if you're even gonna like. So start with something basic and simple. I've I've learned that I don't really like sleeping bags. I don't like to have my feet all contained in a little compartment. I feel encumbered. I don't like it. I want to roll around and move around. I've really come accustomed to liking a quilt and when I'm car camping like this, I set a cot down, I set a big fat foam pad, I lay just a sheet from home over that, and then I just have my quilt laying on top of me. I sleep almost as well as I do at home. And that's not to say you should do that. You might start with something simple, like a sleeping bag and see how you like it. It's also important to consider a sleeping pad. A lot of people think about a sleeping bag or maybe you think you can just get away with blankets or maybe you bring that big fat air mattress from Amazon. But oftentimes that sucks when you get camping. In fact, my sister-in-law has one of those and she was freezing cold last night because all that air in there gets real cold real fast so even if you got something warm on top you could be real cold from underneath make sure you have a halfway decent sleeping pad at the very least with a sleeping bag or something warm to put yourself in but if it's hot summer and you're in a place where it doesn't get cool at night then don't take too much either you might be fine with a sheet Speaking of which, one common mistake a lot of people make is misjudging the weather. Now where I'm at in Idaho right now in the Sawtooth Mountains, it is hot during the day. It's in the mid 80s and it's lovely for swimming and doing all that. I'm wearing a t-shirt and shorts and flip flops. But at night, last night, it got down to the mid 30s. We're at higher elevation and those temperature swings can be very wide. So a lot of people think, oh, I'm going up from the valley. It's hot down here, it's gonna be hot there. And then you're freezing cold at night. So be sure you prepare for that. Even if it's summer, especially out west, if you're going to anything at elevation, you should always be prepared for cold weather at night. On the flip side, I'm guessing, I haven't camped really in the south, but I'm guessing if you came with all that gear in the south, you're gonna regret lugging it around and you're gonna be way too hot. So just make sure you look at the weather specific to the place you're gonna be. And I like to look at weather.gov and even click on the coordinates of where I want to camp so that I get a more precise forecast for where I'm going. Rain is the other factor. Now we get a lot of thunderstorms here in the summer, even when it's hot out. So you still gotta be prepared to get wet. Another very common mistake that people make, and I've made this myself, is picking a spot that does not meet your expectations. Now when you head to the hills, you better already know where you're going. And I would have an option A, B, and C, because sometimes you plan to go to a campsite, you get there and it's all full. That happens a ton, especially here in Idaho. We see more and more of that as more people are getting out and enjoying the woods. So if you show up, it may be full or maybe it doesn't look like what you hoped or maybe you realize that cost 25 bucks and I don't want to spend 25 bucks or you didn't bring cash or you didn't bring a check because who uses checks anymore but you have to in the woods because there's no cell service and how are you going to Venmo it doesn't work like that so you just got to be prepared and have the right expectations the best way to avoid running into any issues is calling the ranger station or whatever public lands office it is that's over the area you're going to camp this also goes for dispersed camping as well as camping in developed areas I prefer dispersed camping. That's mostly what we do with my family. I'm in a dispersed site right now, but I've been here before. I kind of knew what I was getting into. 
You also got to think about toilets, facilities, water. Don't make the mistake of thinking you're just going to show up and it's going to be like all those van life people on Instagram and it's going to be all hunky dory because it might not be. Some spots you have to reserve well in advance. You can't just show up and find one. Some spots you're not allowed to have fires. Do they have a dumpster? Do you got to haul your own trash out? Do you have a trash bag for your trash? If you want to go fishing, is it allowed? If you have a dog, is it allowed? Do you have to have it on a leash all the, all the time? Because that's a pain. I like to go where my dog can be off leash, so I go dispersed most of the time. Do they allow OHVs or motorcycles or ATVs if that's what you're into? I can't stress enough to call in advance and figure out what's allowed where you're at if you don't already know. If you've got big expectations and you can't do half the stuff you planned on, you're going to be really disappointed. Let's talk about campfires. Make sure you drown your campfire. It should be dead out before you go to bed at night, anytime you leave camp unattended, like when you're out recreating, and definitely before you leave camp to head for home. Dead out does not mean no flames. It doesn't mean burned down to the coals, and it definitely doesn't mean you buried the coals in the dirt so they're still hot for the next morning. It means cold, dead, out. Dump a bucket of water on it, stir the coals around in the water with a stick, then dump another bucket if you need to. There should be no smoke and no heat, and it should be cold to the touch. If you're not willing to test that yourself, then you're just being too lazy. Just put your daggum fire clean out, because getting a ticket can ruin a camp out for you, but starting a fire ruins a whole lot more than that for everyone. A lot of people come with high hopes and expectations of having a big blazing fire and making hot dogs and s'mores and all the things, but that is not always allowed. For good reason, the Forest Service, state agencies, etc., will often put in place fire restrictions, especially midway or later in the summer, and especially out west. Know what you're getting into and agree to it. If you are allowed to have campfires like we are right here right now, make sure you're following best practices. Keep that wood away from the fire pit. Have a bucket of water ready to go in case you need to put something out in a hurry. Do you have a cutting tool? Do you have a way to chop it, split it, provide kindling? You may think you can get away with stuff and maybe you can, but that doesn't make it okay. You don't wanna be that guy and it happens every year, multiple times, where a little campfire gets out of hand and that starts a major forest fire. And if you think they never check, we had a ranger come by this morning. The next mistake that many people make is pooping in the woods the wrong way. Now, is it okay to poop in the woods? Maybe not always, some places it's not, but most of the time, yes. And you know, it can be an enjoyable experience, but you should not just go poop willy-nilly anywhere. And here's why, karma. Karma will get you. Now I've been out here walking, we're in a dispersed site. There's no pit toilets or anything, so you've got to take care of your own stuff. I've been walking around here for me and my kids to do our business, and at least three times I've come upon other cat holes not properly done, not dug deep enough, with toilet paper coming out. That's that's nonsense. You know, it's litter, it's, it's impolite, and if you're the guy that's doing that, sometime you're gonna step in that stuff and you're gonna have it coming to you. So poop in the woods the right way. Dig yourself a proper hole, at least eight inches deep. Get your stuff in there, and anytime it's possible, carry your paper out. Another big mistake that people make that can ruin your camp out is just forgetting the right stuff. Now this can be the right kitchen stuff based on the food you're planning on preparing. Maybe you forgot some tongs, maybe you forgot a frying pan or a pot to boil water in or the propane for your stove. Whatever it is, make a list, check it twice, just like Santa Claus or else you might be high and dry out here. If you're a forgetful person, perhaps the best way to not forget stuff is to do some super simple camping. Bring sandwiches, don't bring anything you have to cook. All you need is like a little cooler with your cold drink and your cold food, that might be the best way to go because if you require fewer things, you're gonna forget fewer things. Closely related to that, number eight is bringing the wrong stuff. Perhaps you brought cooking stuff, but you didn't bring a pot and you're planning on boiling some pasta. Perhaps you brought your hot weather sleeping bag and it's gonna be real cold and now you're gonna be freezing tonight. Common camping mistake number nine has to do with water. Where are you gonna get it? Do you bring it? Did you bring it? How much do you bring? Where can you find it if you run out? Is there a pump at the campground where you're staying? Can you filter it out of the lake or creek where you're gonna be by? You need to think about water in advance. I prefer to bring water from home in a big jug, so I've got plenty for both drinking and doing dishes, cooking, etc. I don't like or don't prefer having a whole pack of these. Now, a lot of people bring these out of convenience and that can be fine for some drinking water, especially if that's all you need. But if you're relying on these to also do your dishes and your cooking and all the other little things you end up using water for, this is not a great 
great way to go. Plus it produces a lot of waste that you've got to pack up and haul out. There's a lot of places you can go camping that don't have water available. So just make sure you've thought about that ahead of time because running out of water will certainly ruin your camp out. Number 10 has to do with food storage. Now this is one I do get a little soapboxy about. The main thing you need to think about when it comes to how you store your food while camping is predators, especially bears, and varmints. So even if you live in a place that doesn't have bears and you might think, oh, I don't need one of these fancy coolers like what I'm sitting on here, that may be the case, but varmints will still get into stuff. They'll definitely chew through grocery bags. They'll definitely chew through those little shopping bags. They're gonna get into your food if you leave it out. The best thing you can do is put it in your vehicle. Now, a lot of places there are food storage requirements, including where I'm at right now. And that was another thing that Ranger checked up on this morning. It should be in a hard syllable container or a bear bag hung up in the trees or in a vehicle locked with all the windows up. And don't ever leave food in your tent. The only thing my kids are allowed to have in the tent is water bottles. A few years ago, barely a stone's throw away from here, I was camping and I had done everything right. I put all my food in the car, in a cooler, in the car, etc but I mistakenly left the rear window down about halfway. Well, that night, about 3, 4 a.m., I hear a noise outside, and we were in a little tent trailer at the time, and not 10 feet from where we were sleeping, I see this bear, a young bear, out there standing up, rubbing against a tree, peeing on it, marking his territory, because he just found a car full of chocolate bars. He climbed onto my car, he reached in, and got part of a chocolate bar. Then he went over to the neighbors, where they had a cooler sitting outside, not one that was sealable or anything like that. And he had himself a few beers and sodas. So that's not what we want to support. I was disappointed in myself that time. They'd had several reports of this bear roaming camps and getting into things. You know, we can't prevent all that, but we can do our part to make it not accessible so that those bears don't have to get displaced or euthanized in some cases. Another thing that goes along with food storage is storing your trash. Now, when I'm in camp, I feel fine about hanging a garbage bag on a tree like this to put everything in. But if I'm gonna be gone, or at, definitely at night, I put that inside a vehicle. If you're interested in learning more about this kind of cooler that can resist bears, you gotta watch my video on the best roto-molded coolers where I review a bunch of the best ones out there. Now, everybody knows that bugs can ruin a camp out. Mosquitoes, horse flies, it's best to come prepared with a way to deter them and not just one way. So bug spray is good, but something like a thermocell device might be nice to have around camp as well. I haven't found any one solution that's 100% perfect in all situations, but I have been impressed that these actually do help. Maybe you're into the citronella candles. There's a million ways to try to deter bugs. Come prepared for that because you're gonna be really upset and you can have a really terrible experience if you're inundated by mosquitoes or bugs all week and you didn't come prepared for it. And the final common mistake I wanna talk about today, dead gum bugs, these. One final mistake that can ruin a camp out, at least for me, going to bed dirty. I can handle dirt. I'm pretty dirty right now, it's kinda gross. But what I can't handle is that grimy, sweaty feeling you have after, at the end of a hot day. If I go to bed like that, doesn't matter how good my sleeping system is, I'm not gonna sleep well. So one thing I do before bed, or maybe even before dinner when I'm ready to wind down, is I try to clean off. Whether that means jumping in the lake, rolling in the freezing creek, or at least take a spit bath, use some wipes, get those areas that feel the stickiest. Don't go to bed dirty and you'll sleep so much better because a bad night's sleep will ruin a camping trip for almost anyone. I hope this was helpful. I hope you got some ideas about things you can avoid so that you can have a better experience when you're out camping. And I really hope you go camping with your families. I know I love it. I love getting out there. My family's down at the lake while I was shooting this video, so I'm gonna run down and join them and take a dip. And I hope you gear up and get outside yourself. Take care and we'll see you on the next one. There's the fam, checking out.